And when it comes to catching your own fish or shellfish for the dinner table, there is a saying that you harvest what passes by your door. In other words, you take advantage of what's available when it's available. Well, squid is passing by my door at the moment, so that's what I'm doing today. For the whole session today, I'm just going to be focusing on catching squid. I was out here a couple of weeks ago, and I was fishing for mixed species, but also had some squid jigs with me and managed to, to, to get some. So I know they're here, so hopefully I can do just that. Harvest what, what's passing by my door and get a few lovely tasty squid for the dinner table. Okay, I'm, I'm into a, a very, very, very nice squid here. E either that or I've got more than, more than one on at the, at the time. I knew they were around. Yeah, either this is a really good squid or with the three squid jigs on. That I've got on this rod. I've got more than one. Oh blimey, it's a, this is a huge squid. Well, that's a bit different to your normal calamari. I've no idea what the length of that mantle is, but I do, but I do know we can we can get some very very big squid at this time of year. And that's certainly my personal best, the biggest one I've ever caught. Be interesting to weigh it actually. I'm using two different methods to catch the squid, and the first is this. This is a paternoster, so I've got three standoff loops swivel at the top of the rig and a suitable weight at the bottom of the rig and these are non-weighted squid jigs so unlike when you're maybe squid fishing in shallow water where you cast a weighted squid jig out and you retrieve it twitch it and work it back because i'm fishing in deep water here 90 odd feet of water I, th this is the method and the idea is you lower it down to the bottom and you raise it up off the bottom with X amount of feet wherever, wherever you think the squid may be and then you gently jig it. So ideal method for fishing in deep water. But the, the other method I've got with me is this and what we've got here this is a, a normal weighted squid jig the sort that you would use maybe from the shore off the harbour wall or off the rocks or uh, fishing off of a kayak or a boat in shallow water this is the most common way weighted squid jig 
that you normally cast out and retrieve back. But what I'm doing, I've got it set on a, basically a, a boom, a running ledger, and I'm going to alternate the methods. So with this, with this jig, I'll lower it down to the bottom and then retrieve it X amount of turns from the bottom and then lower it back down again and then retrieve it and just continue and fish that way. So that's the second method. Another lovely squid, and fortunately it shot it shot its ink, and um, fortunately not not all over me. One of the, one of the hazards of squid fishing, it can be it can be a little bit messy, but fantastic. Now this size of squid is absolutely brilliant. I've got a, a great recipe for stuffed squid. Great size for, for that recipe. Um, whereas the, the big one, the bigger ones that I caught earlier, um, they're better cut up and into pieces and, and maybe made into rings or popped into a casserole or whatever. But this size, absolutely fantastic for stuffing. squid this feels another decent one
Well, back in now, and that's the catch. Some absolutely beautiful squid there, particularly this one. That is definitely my personal best. Absolute, absolute beauty. So, of course, I've got to get them home now and get them cleaned and get and ready for ready for cooking. This recipe requires stuffing the squid, and as I mentioned earlier, this size of squid is absolutely perfect for that and more the size of the squid that you are likely to, to get when you buy fresh squid from the fishmonger. But of course the first thing I need to do is clean the squid. First, to, to clean the mantle or the sack of the squid, you want to clean it both inside and out. Now, if you just look there, you can see that the, the insides of the squid is attached to this part of the mantle. So, what you can do is, if you run your finger inside the mantle of the squid, like that, and just try and separate the inside of the, the insides of the squid from the mantle. Once you've done that, you can take hold of the head and just give it a, a bit of a turn and a pull and then with a bit of luck, all of the inside, insides of the squid will come out in one piece. Now, of course, there are going to be bits left in there, um, but we'll deal with those later. Next, I need to remove the, the skin or the membrane of, of the mantle. Uh, and th these are all the little cells that enable the squid to change color to their environment. Now the easiest way to do this is by using these wings here, these flaps. And if you just take your thumb or your, your finger and just push under the, the wing there, and what will happen, you'll separate it like that from the mantle. Then once you've done that, you've actually got your thumb under the membrane. And then you can work it backwards towards the head, but just keep, just keep turning, working it around. Focusing on the middle to the upper part of the squid until it's completely removed. And then once you've done that, you can just pull it, pull it all down and it should all come off in one go like that. Beautiful. So what I'll do later then is give this a good wash inside and get my, get my finger in to remove any of the other bits of the, the inside. But before I do that, I've got to then now remove the quill, or I think it's also called the pen that runs along the, along the top of the squid there. And to do that, again, pop your thumb inside, and what you can do is you can just get your thumb and finger behind it to separate it, and then run it towards the, the head end of the squid, and then just run your thumb down, just to separate it from the mantle, and then what will happen, it will very, very easily pull out in one piece and of course that we don't eat that that's going to be th thrown away okay so what I've got as regards these these pieces here these flaps or wings what I tend to do you can eat them clean them up and eat them but what I what I'm going to do tend to do is actually keep these for bait they're really handy to keep in the freezer for bait for fish like whiting or when I go cod fishing. So that's what I'm gonna use that for. So what I want to do now is the only part that's edible are the tentacles and just, just parts of the, the top of the top of the tentacles here just below the eyes. So what I'm gonna do is take a knife and just separate that just below the eyes there and then this bit is all thrown away 
And then, then what you've got to make sure, sometimes when you do that, you get the, the beak of the squid stuck in here. But on this occasion, I've, got, I've take, already taken the beak of the squid out, out. But that's the beak. And what you've got to do is just check that the top of the tentacles here doesn't contain that beak, because that's not edible. So all we need to do now is give this a good wash. So that's our squid cleaned and washed. So we've got our two mantles, which are going to be which are going to be stuffed. Then we've got our tentacles, and the tentacles are going to be chopped up into pieces and used as part of the stuffing. Now, when it came to the big squid that I caught, I cleaned them in exactly the same way, exactly the same procedure. But we're going to use those in a slightly different way. And here's an example. I've got the mantle uh, of one of those squid chopped up into beautiful squid rings like that to be cooked in a different way. Right, so all I need to do now to, to finish this preparation is chop the, the tentacles up into pieces. As mentioned, the squid sacks are going to be stuffed. Then they'll be placed in a baking dish, covered with a tomato sauce, baked in the oven, and then finished off with a sprinkling of Parmesan cheese. So for the stuffing mix, we've got our chopped tentacles. I've got a beaten egg, then half a large onion, finely chopped, a couple of tomatoes which have been peeled and chopped. Then there's a dozen stone black olives which have been chopped. A couple of tablespoons of fresh herbs and I've got some chopped parsley and some thyme. Then about three ounces of wholemeal breadcrumbs to bind it all together. Before the tomato sauce, we've got a tin of chopped tomatoes, half a chopped onion, clove of garlic chopped, then some freshly, freshly ground black pepper and some sea salt. And then of course our parmesan cheese, got a couple of ounces of grated parmesan, parmesan cheese to finish the dish off. First the stuffing mix. So into a mixing bowl goes all the stuffing ingredients. So we've got our squid, chopped squid, tomatoes, onion, herbs, black olives, breadcrumbs, and then the beaten egg. So it's just a matter now of mixing all that together. Now for the sauce, all I've done is put all the ingredients together. So we've got our tin tomatoes, we've got our chopped onion, we've got our garlic, we've got our salt and pepper. But one vital ingredient that I forgot was a glass of red wine. I'll just give that a stir. Now if you, if you want uh, a smoother sauce, what you can do, you can put all of this in a blender and, and and make it a lot smoother but I quite, I quite like it like it like this now to stuff the squid which is very easy just take your squid sack take a spoon and then pop it in but what you've got to do is and push it down 
Um, what you've got to make sure you don't do, and that's fill it up too, too much. If you fill it up too much with the stuff in, when it cooks, it will shrink a bit and it could burst. So what I've done, I've left, I haven't stuffed it right up to the top there. I've left this bit unstuffed because what we're going to do, we're going to use a cocktail stick and just to, just to basically close up the end, end here so that all the stuffing doesn't come out. So that's one done. So all I need to do now is secure up the ends and just, just going to use a cocktail stick. That's it, our fantastic squid ready to go into the baking dish. Okay, so I've got a baking dish or casserole dish. Just gonna lightly oil it. Pop the squid in. And then cover it with some of the tomato sauce. Cover with the lid and it's ready to go in the oven. I've got the oven heated up to about 170 degrees so we pop that in and leave that in there for about an hour to an hour and a quarter so it's quite quite a long a long slow cook and what that will do that will make the squid nice and tender okay so it's had just over an hour now so it should be beautiful and tender but to finish the dish off now, I've just got to sprinkle it with some Parmesan cheese. And then we just pop that back in, and this time under the grill, just to melt the cheese and then it'll be done. That's the finished dish and as you can see we've got it served with rice but I suppose you could serve it with potatoes instead but just to show you the inside of the stuffed squid there it is there absolutely fantastic and I can assure you it is very very tasty now I got up as you saw at the beginning of the video I got up very very early for this session in fact I paddled out in the dark to make sure I caught first light to give myself the best chance of success and at the time you're thinking what on earth are you doing but when you have a great day out there and you have a bit of success and then you're about to sit down to a meal like this you think yes it's really really worth it so once again I hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching <laughs>